Hello and welcome to Rathod Science Academy. Today in this session we are going to see current affairs of 26th October 2024. So today is a Saturday. There is no text and context. There is no opinion page. So whatever the articles which are relevant from our examination point of view, we are going to see those articles. Okay. So let us see the first image. So I find this image which is very interesting and it is also relevant from our UPSC syllabus point of view. So this uh, image which is talking about NDRF forces, they are helping the people who had been succumbed in this cyclone Dana. Okay, so what is the keyword here is cyclone Dana. And second key of keyword here is NDRF. So in this NDRF, if you see this word, we can see two important words. The first one is FR force and second one is FR fund also. So we have force and we have fund. Okay. So these are the two important topics that you have to see from this article. Okay. So this cyclone is important from your GS paper 1 under geography. And it is important from your GS paper 3 under environment and ecology. And even from GS paper 3 under disaster management. Okay, so what are the keywords that you have to see? So first keyword is you have to understand what is the meaning of cyclone and you have to see the necessary conditions which are necessary for the formation of this cyclone. For example, the sea level temperature should be more than 27 degrees centigrade and you have to see like Coriolis force is compulsory. If there is no Coriolis force, there is no formation of cyclones. So because of this, the cyclone will not form at equator. And next important point you have to see is difference between cyclones and anticyclones. Difference between cyclones and anticyclones. And next important area that you have to focus mm -hmm. is different types of cyclones. In types we have tropical cyclones. And next one is extra tropical cyclones. So what is exact difference? And next you have to see other names of cyclones. For example, willy willies, hurricanes, typhoons, etc. Okay, so all these are very important from your geography point of view. And from environment and ecology, you have to see how this climate change. So what is the important relationship between climate change and this cyclone frequency okay that is the thing and you have to see even examples of recent cyclones in bay of bengal and also in arabian sea and you have to see from disaster management point of view disaster management cycle like what are the steps can be taken pre disaster time during disaster and after disaster Okay, so you have to see disaster management cycle. And actually, the today's newspaper is showing about this image of NDRF, that is National Disaster Response Force. But actually, I took this fund and I am going to discuss about this fund. So this fund is even important from your economy point of view, which comes under your GS paper 3. Okay, now let us see this NDRF, that is National Disaster Response Fund. Okay, so if you see this NDRF that we are going to discuss here is about National Disaster Response Fund. So under our Disaster Management Act of 2005, so here we have section 6, section 46. So this section 46 talks about this National Disaster Response Fund. And who will manage this fund? Obviously, it is at national level. So, by central government. Central government will be managing this fund to meet the expenses for emergency response, relief and rehabilitation due to any threatening disaster situation or any disaster in our country. And this NDRF which is constituted to supplement SDRF. So, we are also having the funds at the state level. But if these funds are not uh, like which is falling route or whenever the funds are running out in the states if they need excess fund so they will be getting funds from this ndrf 
Okay, so actually this NDRF is placed in public account of government of India under reserve funds. Okay, it is very, very important. And next, who is eligible to get this funds? For example, if any state had been undergone with natural disaster, for example, it may be like cyclones or droughts, earthquakes, fire, forest fires, floods, tsunamis, hailstorms, landslides, avalanche, or any cloud burst or any pest attack or, or cold wave or frost. So all these are considered as a severe nature or severe nature by the government of India. And if the government of India thinks that the state which requires some expenditure, then they will be providing assistance to that state from this NDRF. So this NDRF which also covers even man-made disasters, it is very important point. So which are the man-made disasters which are covered under this NDRF, that is terrorist attack or any chemical or biological disaster or any nuclear disaster which is notified by central government. So this is very important point. Okay, so if any state needs to get this NDRF funds, so here states, they have to submit a memorandum which is indicating that how the different sectors of that state got damaged and they have to ask for the needs of fund. Then central will go for assessing the damage of that disaster and they grant additional funds to the states. So this is a process through which they will be getting funds from the central level. So from where we are getting, we are maintaining this NDRF, it is very important. So in NDRF, which is financed through levying of cess on certain items and even some part of excise and custom duty will be also approved uh, under this financial bill to maintain this NDRF. Okay, it is very important. And see this article. Okay, title says UP links performance of DMs, that is district magistrates, commissioners to invest generated in their districts. So actually in your ethics, in chapter 6, you will be having this, chap uh, this topic called as accountability. So how we are making the civil servants or public services accountable? So what is the meaning of accountability? Accountability is nothing but accessibility plus Answerability plus enforceability is called as accountability. So here, if you are getting any article regarding the civil servants and public servants in the news, that you have to write and you have to substantiate whenever you are writing your answer in your ethics. Okay. So here this article is very important. Okay. Let me show you what is a keyword. The keyword here is investment. Keyword here is investment. Investment, how it is related to accountability. So now UP government came up with a step and in this step they are asking this district magistrates and as well as commissioners to get investment and based on the investment we are going to see your accountability. Okay, so this is a thing which mainly said by UP government. So where exactly you can see this article? Where exactly you can place this article in your syllabus? From GS paper 4, Ethics, Integrity and Aptitude. So here in chapter 6, we have this topic of accountability. So in that chapter, try to add this current affairs. Okay, now let us see this article in detail. So what does this article is saying? So the Uttar Pradesh government will now hold district magistrates and divisional commissioners accountable for attracting investments in their districts. So now how they are attracting investment? It is now the accountability of this district magistrate and divisional commissioners. Now they have to attract more and more investments. So why they have to attract more and more investments? So whenever they are attracting more investments, that will lead to improvement of local economy, local economy development and local area development and we can ensure employment opportunities, livelihood opportunities, we can reduce poverty, hunger, malnutrition, etc. in that region. Now who is responsible for account uh, for this attracting of investments in the districts? Now it is the responsibility of district magistrates and as well as divisional commissioners. If, the, if that so and so district is attracting less investments, who is accountable for that? These people they are accountable. They have to give the answer 
to the government like what are the steps they taken and why they failed or why they attracted more investments okay so their performance that is these people performance now will be evaluated through annual confidential reports yes whenever we discussed about this public service values yes there we discussed that yes we need to we need to have this awards and rewards so that we can evaluate the performance of the civil servants right so that we can enhance the values so here there you can add about this annual confidential reports they are the tool which came up by the up government so that we can evaluate the performance of this civil servants okay the initiative which aims mainly to boost local economic development okay this initiative it is mainly to boost local economic development of that area so if you see some key points that you have to remember is yes performance metrics performance metrics so by integrating this investment promotion to this district magistrates then the government which which mainly says that yes we are establishing a clear expectations and accountability so we are employing you and we are giving salaries to you in return you have to do work so which kind of work so you have to meet the expectations of the government and even you have to be accountable for your actions that will leads to enhanced economic growth of that region and the second important point you have to focus is incentivizing investment the promise of recognition for successful dm which fosters a competitive environment so whenever we are giving certain targets to this district magistrates so in a state how many districts will be there many districts so that we can ensure the competitive environment so whenever we are creating a competitive environment so we can encourage officers to actively seek out the investment opportunities and as well as they will also streamline the process so that they can attract more and more investments and as well as they are also focusing on land management so especially land related assessments are very very important to attract investments for example if there is very difficult land acquisition process can we attract investment no so we need proper land related assessments so now here dms and commissioners they have to focus on streamlining of this process of land acquisition or land related assessment so that they can attract more investments and next one here is they can also they are also focusing on monitoring and transparency so this new system of up government now it also introduced regular updates and monitoring that will enhance transparency so whenever there is increasing of accountability and transparency obviously we can we can enhance the trust between government and as well as investors so whenever there is increasing of trust then what happen obviously we can get more and more investment from this investors and this one is here we are also coming up with economic strategy so this initiative which is also aligned with broader economic strategies and especially we are focusing on revitalizing of the local economies so that we can understand that proactive government stance was there regarding attracting of investments okay and let's see this next article guys 21st livestock census begins 1 lakh staff roped in so what is the keyword keyword is 21st livestock census Twenty first livestock. So, from which subject we will be reading this? Livestock comes under biodiversity, right? So, it comes under GS paper three under economy. Sorry, environment and ecology. And even from this livestock, it will also contribute to GDP. Like recently, we came up with this. what white revolution 2.0 whether it is related to this livestock that is production of milk so it is important from gs paper 3 under economy and next when we are having data we can make proper policies and interventions so it comes under gs paper 2 under governance okay so what are the dimension that you have to see is what is this livestock census and you have to see why we need this census of livestock 
and you have to see the role of government and what are the advantages or significance of this census. So all these are the important dimensions that you have to see. Okay. If you see this article, it is saying that now central government has initiated 21st livestock census. It is a crucial five yearly process. Normally, you know that human population census will be done once in every 10 years. So here, there may be a high chance of getting a question here prelims that by comparing human census and livestock census. Because human census is, all, is also in use. Because of COVID-19, it had been delayed. And the expected thing is by 2024, at least we are going to start that human population census. So here we are going to have this 21st livestock census that is going to begin this year. So there is some comparative based question that may be asked. So the in that comparative based question, so one point they may focus on this for how many years we are going to have this census. So normally population census once in every 10 years and this animal census once in every five years. Okay, so why we need this kind of census? It is very important for formulating of policies for sustainable growth of live, lively stock or livestock sector. So actually recently this white revolution 2.0 is in use. What is that white revolution 2.0? Milk production, especially they are focusing on women empowerment, right? So if you want to achieve that target, yes, we need to have this data, yes or no. So can you interlink with this white revolution 2.0 with this 21st census of livestock? So approximately there are 1 lakh field officers and veterinarians. They had been, uh, uh, they are going to participate in this exercise. And within 4 to 5 months of time, we are going to get this census. Okay, and the key points that you have to remember here is, the first important point is policy foundation. So whatever the census data that we are going to get, that will be very essential for making government policies based on accurate and comprehensive information about livestock, demographics and health. And even recently one more current affairs in news regarding livestock. What is that? Apart from this white revolution 2.0. Come on, recall your memory back. Artificial insemination. Uh, what is the project is called as? Many times we discussed in current affairs, guys. Uh, what is that project, Adisha? Monica? Sex selective artificial insemination, right? Uh, it came, if you come to current affairs class on time, you will be getting this. Don't you remember this? Uh, then what is that? Tell me. Tell me that mission. We are using science and technology so that in the next generation we are producing only females. That is called as sex selective artificial insemination. So can we connect this? So if you are having this data so that we can make that project successful implementation in our country. So that whenever we are increasing this female based animals, then obviously can we achieve this white revolution 2.0? Will male give the will male give the milk? No, right? Only females gives the milk. So based on that, that science and technology related projects will be get successful if you are having this proper demographics of this of this animals. And why we have to know about this health? So can you tell me one uh, one disease which is mainly seen in this cattle? Obviously, whenever you see news, that will be news. Uh, Skin disease or disease in cattle. Uh, lumpy skin disease. Yes or no? Lumpy skin disease is related to cattle. So again, always you have to know about the health and demographics so that we can achieve the policies and programs regarding livestock. So can you tell me any program of government which is focusing on improving of livestock? Government program on this livestock in India. National Livestock Mission. So what is this National Livestock Mission is about? Uh, okay, next. Next. Okay, take down the question. 
So see about government programs and policies promoting livestock in India. Government programs and policies or schemes, whatever it may be, promoting the livestock in India. And next one here is, there are more than 1 lakh staff, they are engaging in this. That means we can say there is a very large scale operation, so that we can understand that, yes, accurate data collection is very important, so that it will be providing support for the millions of the livestock. And we are also focusing on long term planning. So whenever we are conducting census every five years, it will allow the systemic planning and as well as monitoring of livestock in our country so that we can adapt for the changing agriculture and as well as environmental conditions. So why we are having very less time here when we compare to that of humans because so these cattle will be more adapted to environment. And whenever there is any change which happening in our climate that will be seen in the climb in this livestock. So because of this, when you are having the census every once in five years, then we can, we can come up with a policy based on the adapted climate of this cattle. And this one here is livestock sector which contributes significantly to our economy. So you can write example of white revolution. And even you can write about allied sector. So because of this allied sector for the farmers, then they are getting at least some income to sustain their life. Because whenever they are focusing on only agriculture, we don't know like whether the income is promised for them or not. So whenever they are going for agriculture and allied sector, so farmers will be getting at least some income for their proper livelihood. And next important one is, yes, if you are having the data, we can go for data driven decisions. So use this word data driven decisions. And we can go for evidence based decision making. So is this an example of objectivity? Yes, right? Okay, we can enhance productivity and as well as welfare within the livestock sector. And even whenever we are having this kind of census, so people will be getting awareness that what is the importance of livestock and what is the importance of this revolution policies of the government and even they can also encourage community partnership, participation as well as community involvement in this sustainable development in this agriculture related allied sectors. Okay, see this article. Center to relaunch mission to preserve ancient manuscripts. So what is the keyword here? Uh, manuscripts, next. Only manuscripts. Center to revive or relaunch mission. What is that mission? National mission for manuscripts. So here there is a very high chance of getting question regarding national mission for manuscripts in your prelims. So please keep star mark. Okay, so manuscripts are related to which subject? They are very old. Okay, they, they are belonging to our ancient history and as well as art and culture point of view. So this, this mission, that is national mission for manuscripts comes under your garments fund. Okay, so if you are getting any question regarding how government is protecting our culture or preserving of our culture or ancient things, can you, can you add this article as an example there? The government is going to relaunch national mission for manuscripts for protecting of our ancient culture. And can you give me other examples of government, how it is protecting our culture? Huh? Okay, World Heritage Sites, next. Okay, returning of Arctic crafts or antiquities which had been went to other countries. So recently US written back many. Uh, next, other steps. We have Archaeological Survey of India. Uh, next. Yes, we have museums. Uh, next. Come on, come on, try, you can do it. Hmm? Examples. Antiquities, Arctic crafts. Manuscripts, Archaeological Survey of India, Museums, uh, Awareness, how, how exactly awareness? Okay, adding curriculum in education, okay, next. So see this also, like how our government is protecting our culture. 
Yes, Katapur Corridor, it is about religion, but I am talking about history. Okay, so do this work. So what are the work I am giving that is very, very useful, guys. It is only about manuscripts. So this article is about manuscripts. So earlier we discussed about antiquities and anti-crafts where US returned back to India. So here why it is in news, Union Ministry of Culture is set to revive and relaunch National Mission for Manuscripts. So keep star mark for this, National Mission for Manuscripts. So what is this National Mission for Manuscripts? So this mission, it is an autonomous body which comes under Ministry of Culture and when it was launched in year 2003 and actually this mission it is focusing on identifying, documenting, conserving and making accessible of our Indian manuscripts heritage. And these manuscripts they may contain different themes, some may be present on or some may be written on this religion, some may be written on some practices, some culture etc. It includes variety of themes and textures, aesthetics, scripts, language, calligraphies, illuminations, what are the diagrams you are using, it may be different from one to another. And the important motto it is, especially conserving the past for the future. And after it came around 75% of manuscripts, they had been gathered and they are in Sanskrit language and 25% are in regional languages. So this object is very important. On this objectives also, you may get a prelims question. So the key important objective is documentation, conservation, digitalization as well. It is very important point. Digitalization and online dissemination of manuscript heritage of India. And to achieve this mandate, so this mission also established more than 100 manuscript resource centers. Okay, and also manuscript conservation centers are set up all over in India. And though they said that around 10 million manuscripts, probably the largest collection in the world which is present in India. So if you are saying about the rich culture heritage of India, you can add this point. India is having more than 10 million manuscripts. It is the largest collection in the world itself. Okay, so what is manuscript? Manuscript is nothing but it is a handwritten composition which had been written on a paper or any bark or any cloth, metal or palm leaf or any other material which is, which is dating back to 75 years. So it should be from now 75 years old. And these manuscripts, they differ from historical records like there are epigraph or it may be firmans, it may be or revenue records of different dynasties or anything. Okay, manuscripts are found in hundreds of different languages and script because India had been ruled by different people different kingdoms. So because of this, we are having wide range of languages, script, etc. Okay, see this article, guys. ISRO DBT sign agreement to conduct biotechnology experiments in space station. Uh, tell me what was this article is talking about? Uh, Department of Biotechnology and ISRO, they're going to have an agreement. So in that agreement, this biotechnology department will be conducting experiments in space station. So which, sta which space station they are talking about? International space station? So how this international space station will give permission for Indian department of biotechnology to conduct experiments there? Will there? Yes or no? Yes, we are going to have our own space station soon. So in that space station, once it gets ready, so now here Department of Biotechnology will be doing tests in our space station. It is not about International Space Station. Clear? So from which subject you can read this? GS Paper 3 under Science and Technology. Okay. So in India, we have land. So we can do whatever test we want. But why we need to go to space and do the test in the space? Uh, tell me. Huh? Why we have to do the test in the space? We have land here, we have water, everything is there. So we can do right on the land itself, on its surface. Why we need to go, go to the space station and do the test there? 
Please. How plants will go in space? Space, what is the meaning of space, guys? Do we have gravity there? Do we have oxygen there? Uh, then how the life can exist there? Guys, think properly. Uh. Okay, actually this test is about whenever humans are sent to space, they will be living in the zero gravity. So how this space will be impact on your biological functions. Here it is not about biodiversity or life or growing plants there, okay. Yeah, let us see the context why it is in use. So the Indian Space Research Organization and Department of Biotechnology, they signed an agreement to conduct biotechnology experiments abroad in India's forthcoming space station and write down the name of the India space station that is Bharati Antariksh station. Bharati Antariksh station and the expected time is between 2028 to 2020, 2035 we are going to have our own space station and experiments they will ex, uh, they will examine the effects of weightlessness on muscle loss so how the muscle loss will be happen and as well as potential algae based nutrients and health impacts of radiation so these are the studies they are going to do okay so when we are having this kind of collaboration with isro and dbt then what happens so we can move towards integration of our biotechnology in space exploration and even India's commitment to advancing its space capabilities, we can achieve that. Because India is running or India is flying in this new space era or new space race. So because of this, India also need to do some biotechnological experiments regarding this space so that we can maintain our pace in this space sector. And next one is we can also go for scientific exploration in the space so these experiments they are planning to see the interest in understanding human biology under space conditions. So in the space we have zero gravity and we have to carry our oxygen, we have to carry our necessary things. So how in the stressed conditions human body or human biology will be changing? Especially it is very crucial for this long duration missions. Do you know about this Sunita Williams? So from how many days she is in the space? Ah, tell me the time. Okay, so is that right to stay in space for that long duration? No, right? So we have to understand how our body will be getting changed. So if you if you have the data or if you have an idea like what will happen in that stressed conditions, we can take proper measures to not to happen in the future. And as one is, we can also focus on the future missions and plannings. So the mention of Incorporating experiments to Gaganyaan's test flights, which underscores a proactive planning in India's space missions, which ensures scientific research complements in this human space travel. So actually, we are also having this human flight mission, that is Gaganyaan. How many people you are going to send? For who are they? Are they astronauts? Uh, who are they? Air Force people? Okay, so even India is also planning for this human, spy, human space flight mission. So because of this, we need to know about this kind of studies. And in future, we don't know like how many people will be sent to space by India. And this one is even biomanufacturing growth. So actually, if you want to see the research and development, especially medicines. So if we want to develop the medicines, we need to develop in a very controlled environment. So that controlled environment will be provided in space, not on the earth. Especially for the developing of new case of antibiotics also, we need to have a controlled environment. So as you all know that one important problem we are facing is antimicrobial resistance. So what are the antibiotics we are having? They are having resistance problem. So we need to develop new antibiotics. So if you are conducting the space controlled missions, we can also focus on developing of new class of antibiotics. 
And next one here is the economic impact. What will be the impact? So if you want to go for doing of research in space, whether it is costly or cheap, yes. So with the productions of dollar three hundred billion bio economy, the collaboration could signify the boost of Indian economic growth through innovation biotechnology. And even if you are investing in this, obviously you will be getting returns back. So this is the thing which mainly said. And even when we are exploring algae for food preservation and jet fuel production, which illustrates a dual focus on health and sustainability, which is aiming for innovative solutions to global challenges. So tell me about this biofuels, guys. What is this biofuel? How many generations of biofuel we are having? Uh, biofuel fuel we are we are getting from biological products. Uh, so what is that biofuel? Not methane. Bioethanol, yeah, biofuels, generation one, generation two, generation three, and generation four. No idea. Science and technology is gone into space. Gone? Ah, uh, then tell me, biofuel generations, Mangatesh. Ah, uh. <laughs> generations. So, what is the difference between these generations? Some fuels are made by food products like starch, corn starch. Uh, some fuels are pro, uh, produced by waste material after harvest. Some are generated by algae. Uh, come on. Are you recalling some things or not? Nadisha, science and technology. Ravi. Uh, after this class, write this also. Different generations of biofuels. Amma, um, uh, you won't listen. Different generations of biofuel. Very good memory. Shameless. Okay, so in this way, especially if you are having about the knowledge of algae also, we can support our biofuels. So that is the thing which mainly said. And this one is, this agreement will also helpful for enhancing of ecosystem for startups of for this especially biotechnology and that will leads to breakthrough in this pharmaceuticals as i said we have to maintain a proper environment or control conditions to develop any new drugs so for that this agreement is very helpful yeah see this article fair trade india must develop a transparent carbon trade policy ah uh, tell me carbon trades and carbon market mm. Uh, carbon trade, carbon policy, carbon markets, uh, greenhouse gases. So, Jata, mm, tell me. To control greenhouse emissions, we need this. Okay, so why we are talking about this carbon trade now? Why we are talking about this now? So what we are going to have in the next month? Yeah, COP29, where? Uh, Azerbaijan. Okay, so next, what happened? Uh, Baku. Baku is the capital city. So we are going to have this COP29 next month. So we are getting ready ourselves. So we are talking about this carbon trade policy. So now this article is saying that we have to develop a transparent carbon trade policy. Okay, so keep star mark for this carbon trade policy. You may get a question on this in means. Carbon trade policy. So from which subject you will be dealing with this guys? GS paper 3, environment and ecology. Next. Economy how? Next, science and technology from GS paper 3. Uh, next, uh, geography, how? Climate change comes in environment, no? Mm, UPSC. How? Mm, trading. Okay, ahead of 29th edition of conference of parties, we are going to have in the next month in Baku, Azerbaijan. So there is a renewed energy in 
government circles and we are focusing on india's industry transition to carbon markets so the important aim now is we have to reduce this carbon dioxide emissions so here there is a question that you can get is now 2020 uh, sorry this cop 29 is going to happen in this azerbaijan you have to see at least like cop 28 cop 26 cop 27 in which countries they had been done so you can get question like this so consider the following pairs so on one side they will give cop 29 28 26 and on other side they gave the country where they held so you have to be focused on that as well okay write at least five cop 29 28 27 26 25 and even you have to see important COPs where we came up with this Paris Climate Deal. So in which COP meeting we had this Paris Climate Deal Agreement? Huh? Uh, I think Vilasar gave this list. Uh, come on, tell me. In which conference of parties we have this Paris Climate Deal? Uh. Remember, Venkatesh, you are there in that class. Uh, tell me. Sudhata. Nadisha. Okay, see that also. Uh, uh, Paris climate deal in which COP? COP? 21. Check once again. So don't use chat GPT guys, please. <laughs> okay. Carbon markets are the market-based mechanisms. They are designed to reduce, obviously, the greenhouse gas emissions by creating a financial incentives for the individuals and organization to reduce the carbon footprint. So actually, we need to have a, we need to have a proper market where we have to reduce this greenhouse emissions. For example, if there is one company which is releasing more amount of carbon dioxide emissions so we need to have a market where it can sell its more emissions to others so this is in simple called as carbon markets the important aim it is to reduce their carbon footprint so in this carbon markets we have two types of carbon markets first one is compliance market second one is voluntary markets so if you see this image you can clearly understand this so compliance market is nothing but it is mandatory. For example, if this car, if this company, this is company one and this is company two, if this company one is releasing excess emissions, so it can go and it can purchase this emissions reduction from this car, uh, this market two. Okay. So for example, there is a target of emitting hundred carbon units into atmosphere. This company is releasing 120 and this company is releasing 80 only. So here this company can buy this emissions from this company too. It is called as compliance market. So voluntary means nothing but through voluntary also. If you are, if you are emitting more amount of carbon dioxide emissions, you can shift towards renewable energy sources so that you can reduce the carbon dioxide emissions. So this is called as voluntary market. Okay, so here you have to know about how the government is focusing on reducing of this carbon dioxide emissions to this carbon market. So this is very important. So actually we are having this carbon credits trading scheme. So when we came up with this trading scheme, okay, under this Environment Protection Act of 1986, India launched this scheme to reduce greenhouse emissions by trading of carbon credit certificates. And next one here is other existing schemes like PAT, that is Performance Achievement Rate. So if you are performing good and if you are reducing the emissions, you will be getting incentives from the government, that is called as PAT scheme. And we are also having this Renewable Energy Certificate Scheme. So especially that is focusing on transition towards renewable energy sources, so that obviously we can reduce this carbon dioxide emissions. And we, are, we also have this one more program that is based on monitoring and verification. So according to BAE and National Steering Committee for Indian uh, Carbon Markets, so they are responsible for maintaining of integrity of this carbon credits through rigorous monitoring and reporting. So always in our ethics also, we discussed always we need audits and inspections, right? So audits and inspections of this carbon market will be done by this 
BE and as well as National Steering Committee for Indian Carbon Market. So here also you can get a question. So who will be monitoring this carbon credits or carbon market through inspection and monitoring in India? So those are these two organizations, BE and as well as National Steering Committee. Okay. And next, see this article. Sharpen the anti-defection law, strengthen democracy. So what is this article talking about? Anti-defection law. What is this anti-defection law? Yes, whenever the political party members are changing from one political party to another political party, they will be disqualified. So whether it is present in our original constitution? Uh, uh, schedule? Which schedule? Schedule 10 talks about this, but it is not present in our original constitution. It is added to 52nd Constitutional Amendment Act. Okay, so there are some criteria for uh, but, uh, who are voluntarily shifting from one political party to another party, who are nominated members and who are independent members. So see that criteria once and polity is going on now, sir will be discussing that. I think sir might discuss this schedules, right? Okay, in detail he didn't. Okay, so here you have to say about the problems in this anti-defection law. So the important major problem in this anti-defection law is the presiding officer of house. For example, in case of Lok Sabha, speaker. In case of Rajya Sabha, we have vice president or chairman. So they will be deciding whether it comes under anti-defection law or not. So normally there is no time limit which is prescribed by our constitution or by anything that is about within how much time these people need to declare that decision. Okay. So if this article is saying that we have to remove that and we have to give the proper time frame for this presiding officers to decide whether that comes under defection or not so that we can strengthen our democracy. And next article, government doubles loan limit under Mudra Yojana. So do you know about this Pradhan Mantri Mudra Yojana? So have you studied in your economy guys? Uh, what is this Mudra Yojana is about? Huh? giving loans to small and medium enterprises. Okay, so now this loan limit had been increased. So please add this article in that point where you wrote in your economy, okay? Or else at least in the last page of your economy notes, write down this title, government doubles loan limit under this mudra yojana to 20 lakhs rupees. So here again, it is your responsibility to see what are the key features who are eligible what is the scheme about, under which ministry it comes. So see this in your governance point of view, that is about the schemes. There is a high chance of getting schemes in your examination. Either it may be mains or either it may be prelims. Okay. So these two are very important articles that appeared. And especially you have to see in this mudra, we have Tarun, we have Kishore. And what is one more thing? Three components will be there in this mudra yojana. What is one more? Tarun, Kishore and? No idea. Huh? Okay, so see the scheme. If I tell now, you won't remember. So if I give work, then only you will write. At least your hand coordination, your mind coordination will coordinate. Okay. Homework. Uh. Always I have to inform in the group only, you know. You won't write on the books, right? Write down, then. Okay, so these are the important articles that appeared in our today's Hindi newspaper. So by this I'm concluding. Thank you so much guys for watching. And if you really like this class, please hit the like button and please do share this class to your friends. And don't forget to subscribe to Rathod Science Academy. And thank you so much for watching.